Right, I'm going to take a go at uh, starting off my Stormcasts. So I'm going to start off by trying my Vindictors. So I've actually started undercoating one of them just to see that I was happy with the core base colour of the red. And I'm definitely going for that one. Now, I'm actually going to use a different kind of... Um, type of paints than Citadel on this one. So these are, um, let's have a look, the scale color creatures from Hell, basically Scale 75 is the brand. And um, basically I've got the uh, Hasto Purple, and that's gonna be my base. In order to get a nice shade, and they're going to use Blood Angels Red Contrast from Citadel. Uh, and then I'm going to start highlighting in Baal Crimson. And just to add a bit of a, a like sort of lightness to key areas. And then I'm going to, as you can see here, um, finish off with my highlights on Team Orange. I have been really tempted to use a fourth colour. Well, fifth colour even. Um, and it would be this yellow here. And I'm thinking of using that just to do the final point of highlight. So just to basically use that Marduk yellow just to kind of finish off the highlights and create a nice shine to the edges. Um, I might even go one step further and do white, but because this is kind of a for beginners, um, I, just, I think I'm going to keep it at that point. And then maybe in a different video, just go a little bit further. So what I've done to begin with is I've just got some of this and then I've popped it on my wet palette. And then I've just basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush. I'm not going to put it too deep in there and I'm going to twist it to get the excess off. Now, what's gonna, what that's going to help me do is, as I'm painting now, let's see if I can keep my focus on my miniature, not me. Okay. So, as I start painting now, it should create, you know, a nice smooth paint. And you can see it's kind of running over very easily and I'm getting good coverage out that much work now I'm not worrying too much if my first layer is a bit streaky I can live with that because I can go back over it later on and honestly the, the paintbrush that I'm using isn't anything major special it's just the one that actually came with my Stormbringer my, it's a standard brush I need a proper camera for painting as well Fortunately, you using my mobile phone is a bit rubbish. Right. <laughs> okay, so I've got to basically just do this for the entire miniature. Now, I'm going to try my best as I go. Not to accidentally... Kind of get any of the red paint where it doesn't belong. So as you can basically see here, there's like these little bits where it's like the cloth, it's the under, like the undergarment, I don't know what the technical word is for the garment that you wear underneath armour, I'm sure there is probably a technical term. Uh, 
Anyway, I'm trying my best not to accidentally get my paint on that. Now, the reason I'm using a grey as a base is because um, I find personally using black as a base can cause, I don't know, just too much darkness in the shadow. Okay, um, I am actually going to get the shadows applied by using, um, what's it called now? By using a deeper red, that contrast paint. But I also find that if you water down your paints as you go over grey, it allows the grey to kind of come through slightly and adds a natural shadow. And then as I add the other paints on top of this, I'm going to obviously focus the lighter paints towards the edges or to any point that kind of protrudes forward of the model. I'm hoping that you can actually see here, I've chosen a, not chosen a good camera angle, I think. So you can see the, the actual main colours coming along now. And, you know, it's holding on quite well. Obviously, I've got quite a few um, lights on the model at the moment. So I might maybe getting more reflections back onto the camera than I want as well. But hopefully you can see how I'm applying the red to key areas. Okay, just going to push down there. Now, one thing that you can do is if you find that your layer, your first layer is far too streaky and not got good coverage, don't just keep globbing on more paint as in onto your paintbrush. That is not the way you do it. You've got to keep adding one layer, you know. So after this layer is dry, if you're not happy, if you think it's too streaky, then just gently add another thin layer um it, it's kind of you know uh, almost like a, a an absolute mantra for painters of miniatures about the idea of using two thin coats All right okay we're getting there I also personally find as well that thin coats mean that if you accidentally get the colour on another part, it's like basically you can get another brush with a load of water on it and kind of just wash it away. If you're ever not sure which part is armour and which part is like uh, the the clothing or whatever, just um, my advice is sort of go online and try and find a 360 view of the model. Uh, particularly on Games Workshop's own site, they do a lot of 360s of models. And that'll allow you to work out which part is the cloth and which part is the armour. I think that little bit there, it's hard to tell because obviously if you head round to the front, 
it's like a kind of molded plate on the front so it's kind of unclear about to me anyway where the metal ends and the clothing begins so I think what we've got is we've got a moulded front piece there. It kind of comes round. It terminates around about the point of the join. And then if you look carefully, you can see, hopefully you can see, it looks like a very clear spine. Now, that that's to me feeling like that's still part of the actual armour but it is hard to tell because of the way that it's been set up you know because you've got that moulded front piece it feels like that back piece is not part of you know or shouldn't be part of the armour um, so I'm going to leave that for now for when I have a little few minutes just to to find a 360 view of this miniature Here we've got a moulded shoulder pad, so I'm just going to have to very be very careful while going around it. And you can see that I'm not going all the way up to the trims either, because I want them to be a different colour. Oh, right then. Oh. <laughs> that's my um, that's my big clunky hands not working again. And I'm dropping things. Not good. So you end up breaking things, isn't it? <sighs> Fortunately, side effects of um, fibromyalgia. Unfortunately, my fingers wore out very quickly. It's probably why I'm never going to be. You know, a pro painter, unfortunately. And I'm only ever going to be an amateur because I can't guarantee when my fingers are going to decide they're going to rebel against me. Okay, now onto this gauntlet. And see, this is why I did not permanently attach that shield yet from when I was doing the, the how to build video. Okay, I think to these last bits now and then I've got this first layer done so the, I mean if you really want a bright vibrant everything sort of highly intense light colors then you start with obviously a white if you want very dark very dull colours, then your base coat obviously should be black. And of course, with me, I'm a kind of midpoint person. <laughs> so for the most part, I want my models to, you know, basically gain a bit of a combination of light and dark. Honestly, it's highly unusual for me to be painting a miniature like this fully by hand i actually have an airbrush but the reality is most people don't and i'm 
just decided in this instance that although I'm using, you know, colours that aren't Citadel standards, I'm hoping that anyone, you know, you should be able to find a Citadel colour similar to the ones that I'm using. Yeah, in fact, I think, you know, in the end, I just I just like the way that these scale 75 pinks go on, particularly for red, and that's why I'm using them. Um, I think from a red point of view, Games Workshop reds um, look really great on things like tanks. Um, their contrast... Uh, is it Blood Angel Contrast? Um, that looks beautiful. Put over Lead Belcher. But in the end, my advance to the amateur painter is, you know, don't don't be overly loyal to a particular brand of paint. Okay, there's loads of paint types out there for painting miniatures. And you will find like different colours work better in different situations. And if you're not confident to mix colours as well to get the shade that you want, then obviously a wider range of paints is a, a way to go. Right, okay, so that is the first layer done. As you can see, I've got basically uh, a single layer of red on. It's slightly streaking places, but I'm not worried about that. But what I've got down is a solid base. Now, what I'm going to do is just gently with the excess on my brush. Just gonna gently go over anywhere that looks a bit too streaky. But this is literally just using my brush excess and nothing else. Oh, I can see there, missed a little bit of that. <laughs> okay, we are looking good so far. I mean, hopefully you'll see as well that because I've used an undercoat of a, a mid-tone grey, not a light grey or a dark grey, I'm getting a kind of interesting effect as well as the 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 grey kind of pops through it. Okay, so that's another good reason where why I like to if I'm doing something metallic, why I like to paint the underside in grey. Okay, so that's the base of that one done. Obviously, come back to this a little bit later on and do the next layer. Right, so the next colour that I'm going to use here is this contrast. So I'm going to use Blood Angels Contrast. So now. I'm going to actually use this as a shade, which means part of what I'm going to do is actually water it down quite a lot as I go along, so that it kind of flows into recesses. So, yeah. oh, camera 
of slip now it's okay so got got some on my paintbrush and then i'm gonna just pop it over towards the wet palette take a lot of excess off try and get it quite watered down and then gonna head and put it wherever i feel that will have darkness to the armor so depending on how i'm gonna approach that darkness so you can see here i want to put it basically i'm thinking about where the light's coming from so if the light is coming from the downwards then the shade is going to obviously be from here however we've got to think about things like there so i've got kind of underneath these little recesses so I get it so it points at the camera so you can see where I'm shading I'm kind of slipped down I think that's why I can't <laughs> camera's position slipped I think okay there we go that might be better and again can you see so I'm going to get the wet version of this here I'm going to do underneath basically any word that is dark. And then um, particularly between parts of the hand as well. joins so obviously under here I got that there with focus don't know why my camera's positioning slipped so much I'm gonna try and reset that now because it's a bit weird that Yeah. Ooh. Oh, maybe not. Something's really not up and like my camera today. Oh gosh. Probably not the best approach, but there we go. Right. I think that's a bit better. Yeah, it keeps like losing its focus on the miniature because it keeps sliding downwards. Okay. So anyway, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to discover where there might be any obvious areas of darkness so again under the shoulder blades there the armor going downwards up here where the armor joins that's going to have a bit of darkness and then obviously under the arms Now, obviously, this part here, this is where the shield is attached. So, again, that's going to be in the shade. Deep down here between the legs, that's all in the shade. And again, even simple things like this part here. So, obviously, if we think about these parts of the legs on the inside of the leg down on the feet in particular underneath here so pretty much all the feet part is going to have quite a bit of shade on it because of the way that it's designed. Oh, hopefully you can see. I'm not sure how my camera's focusing today. It seems to be struggling to focus on the miniature for some reason. And you can see, I'm just trying to think about anywhere that we've got a bit of shadow. You know, it does 
does take some thinking in the end about where the shade is going to be. Now, obviously, logic, you know, logically you might be thinking, well, surely, you know, when I put the miniature up like that, I'm going to end up with shadow anyway. But obviously, that's not quite how you're going to get a good effect. So, unfortunately, with well, for, the good thing about miniature painting is you can paint on where you want the deepness and the recesses. You can't always guarantee that your miniature is going to be viewed in perfectly down light. And that's why a lot of miniature painters like to, you know, go for this kind of shading that we need. Okay. Right. Well, I think for the most part, it's looking good. I don't know why. My, I don't, I'm hoping that my camera's focused better when I play this back because at the moment it just looks terrible the, sh the focus right so there we go I've basically gone away and I've put the key parts of the shading on it I'm going to try and reset my camera so it's in a better location because it's just not getting focus Okay, so now I'm going to actually do the first sort of level of highlighting on this. So, over here on my wet palette, I've gone and put down some of this Ball Crimson. Then again, now I'm going to just carefully get it to roll the wet palette and now I'm going to start kind of painting in what you might call partial highlights so not the not the uh, extreme highlighting on the edges but just from here so look here on this panel I'm going to start pulling this downwards And see, because I've got it wet, I'm able to control where it goes. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to paint downwards and push towards the edges as I paint downwards. This way, I'm pushing most of the paint down to the highlight and away from the shade. Get my hand in the way there. <laughs> okay, a bit more. And then over here on the knees, again trying to push towards the highlighted points, you know, the, the sort of the highest point of the miniature. Or the outer edge, basically anywhere where I think I want the light to touch best. Again, part of the advantage of thinning out your paints is it makes them flow easier. Well, it makes them significantly more translucent. And that way you get the colour underneath working with it. I have to use a bit more red on my wet palette. I kind of like scale 75 because they come in dropper bottles so you're not putting too much in your paintbrush. Now, if you don't quite get the, the colour that you want first time round, 
it's not a problem you'll just add another layer later or if it looks too streaky so I never tend to worry too much about, about that to begin with you see here I'm trying to kind of not move into that shadow either there I'm trying to do it along the edge I'm trying to do it up on the top of the pauldron And the edges, you can see I'm trying to keep that deep shadow there. Right, and again, from the top here, pushing downwards. Get the highlight. Again, a bit of brightness there. Bit of brightness on the top of this, basically where the sun's going to be hitting the most. Yeah, get the fingers highlighted. Now remember the arm is going to be in shadow, so I'm not really worried about getting much on there. Back parts again you can see they're not really in the light so again I'm not trying to overdo that there now heading down the miniature and now sometimes holding it like this and sort of flattening it downwards when you're dealing with this um, layer of reflection helps you think about where the sun will hit it See, I'm doing around the back of the legs now, because that's where I think the brightness will hit. Again, you can start to think about, look, so if it's hitting here, heading downwards, it may also be hitting this part. And then might be kind of just knocking onto the back of the foot. Okay, and then... Just going to twist it around to the front, do the same again. I'm going to obviously have it starting on the sharp part, parts of the feet. I'm going to have less on the inner side. And I want to, have, you can see here, it's going to be hitting that knee there. It's probably going to have a slight moment of refraction off this part here so this sharp part but again I'm being mindful I don't want to overdo it I don't want to get too much brightness in the wrong place on the knee on the here with them, the light would be kind of refracted on the outer part <clears throat> on the foot again heading for the points where the light would obviously hit the most and then kind of glare off it and then it's good to maybe consider all the sharpest points as well so anywhere where you've got a particularly uh, you know clear edge right so what I've done there is I've pretty much done my layer. Now, hopefully by this point, you're starting to see that it's got some nice sort of odd shininess. Now, partly that is due to the light coming off it. I'm just going to add a bit more brightness to this top part because I really want it to feel like the light's hitting that most. There's no other way to put it. It's basically the light is 
predominantly hitting the breastplate. Yeah, so there we go. Right, so there we go. We've got this kind of downwards light. Now, obviously, I've got lots of lamps shining at this at the moment to help me paint with it. So what I'm going to do, um, Amazon, office lamp off. Okay. okay. And then let's see what happens. So hopefully you can start to see if I kind of cut down the number of lights that are on in the room so it's not directional. In fact, I'll even turn this one off. Okay. That way we're looking at it in a more natural light. And hopefully you can see... So obviously at the moment, um, we've literally got nothing other than daylight hitting it now. And hopefully you can start to see that because of the grey underneath, because of the way I've put those two layers on, the light is hitting it just where I want it to and nowhere else. Okay. Okay, Amazon office lamp on. Okay. So, now it is time for me to move on to some highlighting. So, I've got myself some Tiamat Orange. And I've just put a bit on my wet palette. Now... I tend to find that when it comes to this kind of highlighting, it's good to start off with quite a small brush, uh, and it always depends on the size of the model as well, what kind of brush you'll actually use. I've got finer detail ones than this. But basically, this is where we're going to hit the edge highlights. So... Oh, I need it a bit thicker than that. I'm just going to try kind of really pick out the edges now. Now some people do this by dry brushing. I'm not going to do dry brushing on this version. I'm actually going to just try and do this basically just by using you know, standard edge highlighting. Uh, you will sometimes hear the term extreme highlighting. So extreme highlighting is where you really sort of blend the colours together. Which I'm still debating whether or not I want to do that. I might, I might go full yellow at one point. You can see here I'm trying to just kind of get the highlights, get the edges eaten up. Hopefully you can start to see that orange just sort of picking out here and there. Now, with this, um, like this pauldron armour here, I think it's called the pauldron, I'm terrible at reading things and pronouncing things. Okay, well with hitting this trim, just going to put a bit of a highlight at the top, okay, just to give it the impression of being hit by the light. Basically, I want it to feel like I've got a bit of sunlight really hitting it, bright sunlight. Hitting that. Okay, hopefully that looks alright. 
Uh, okay, and then same with this other side. And then just here, obviously I want more of a, a heaviness to the bright lighting. So if I do here, What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the orange running all the way up the arm in this manner. Okay, getting there. <laughs> right, this one not so much because obviously this is going to be hidden behind the shield. So no one's really going to see that and any extreme lighting there is going to look odd. I think I need to just put a bit more orange at the top here because I'm looking at it as it's drying. It doesn't look bright enough for the position that it's in. All right, now, just a couple bit more knocks of orange on the hand, and then I'm going to start moving down to here. Let's make sure that that's getting highlighted in the right place. Basically, it's all about picking where the light's going to hit. It's a bit of a process, but it looks stunning when it's done. Okay, on this orange here, on the kneecap, I want that to be very vibrant because I think that kneecap's really where the, you know, the shine of the sun's going to kind of hit. Okay, and then just tiny bits on the leg here. So a little bit there. Obviously, you can see here. I want that orange to be vibrant. I don't want it to kind of, you know, hit outwards all along there. Then I'm gonna do obviously here, here, and here to create that brightness. I'm gonna come round on this part. Get the brightness hitting there that's a bit too much I'm just gonna thin that out a bit okay then edge highlights have it hit there come over this side again not so much on this side because this is where we start going into the darkness a bit and then again on this little bit here moving downwards a little bit into the darkness mainly into the light get that sharpness And then just round the back to finish off. Oh, helps if I don't drop my paintbrush. sure that I'm happy with the way that it's hitting every single point around the back I just want to get it to reflect off here I 
Okay, so Amazon light off. Okay. Okay, now let's have a look how that looks with just nowhere near as much natural lighting on it. Sorry, artificial lighting on it. So you can hopefully see that with no artificial lighting on it, what I'm doing now is I've got a kind of painted on effect. The reason it kind of is shining like that, I think, is usually down to the grey on the undercoat. And it's kind of building up a metallic effect. But that's it. Basically, that is how we do. You know, a nice grey. And, you know, it, it is a beginner technique, this. To, I would, you know, all right, maybe I've really shown off my skill at holding my hand in place. But you can see here... It looks like the sun's shining from above. I think potentially in the future I will um, look at, how do I put this, um, adding a bit of yellow to the extreme of the highlight and I might demonstrate that on one of the character models. So hopefully, I hope you like my little how to paint red armour tutorial. Um, and, you know, please like and subscribe and, you know, make comments. Tell me if you like it or if you think I should have done something different.